what if half the population subconsciously thought that hearing stories from the other half just wasn't for them? Sounds quite insulating. But it seems to be the case with books today. Women will read roughly 50-50 books written by men and books written by women, whereas for men the ratio is more like 80-20. So they'll read four books by a man for every book by a woman. Ouch. I really thought we were past all that, that we'd left the need to disguise gender back in the 19th century with George Eliot, yeah, a woman, and the Bronte sisters and others all dabbling in pseudonyms. Mary Ann Seacart, who we just heard from, considered publishing under M.A. And of the best-selling female authors today, who has the most men reading? The writer with the most men, with the highest ratio of men, was L.J. Ross. L.J. is killing it. And We'd never know if she'd be killing it as much with a male readership if she were writing under Louise. But let's just say that being LJ might not hurt. And it's not just fiction where female writers often have a smaller audience pool. In 2021, only 33% of authors on the New York Times non-fiction bestseller lists were women. Makes me feel a bit weird to think that facts are somehow a man thing. And it's not just about who's telling the story, it's about whose story it is too. Those include memoirs. So that means we're still more interested in reading the stories of great men than great women. And to quote Mary Ann, men are... Narrowing their empathy and their understanding of what it is to be human, not just male, but human. So what can we do? Well, author E.B. Bartles, who is E.B. to her friends as well as it being conveniently gender neutral, set up a cracking column called Nonfiction by Non-Men in which she interviews some great authors who are women, trans, and non-binary. The vast majority of writers that I had read in grad school were white, cis men, often dead. Um, and like, I love a lot of these writers. Like, I love George Orwell, I love E.B. White, I love Montaigne, Samuel Johnson, but I also was thinking there are so many more people out there writing nonfiction. Um, in particular, there are cis women, trans women, non-binary folks, and uh, so many people of color and queer writers. And I, I wanted to do something that kind of featured these writers and kind of gave them more of a platform. And these recommendations are needed. E.B. is trying to counteract a lot of men recommending men. The New York Times has a column called By the Book where um, famous authors recommend other books. The men, when they were interviewed, again, it's the same ratio, recommended four books by men for every one book by a woman. And half the men didn't recommend any books by women at all. We should pause here, because it is worth saying it's not that men don't enjoy books by women. In fact, according to Goodreads, on average, men rate books by women at 3.9, compared to rating books by men at 3.8. So we can safely assume that there are lots of great books by women just waiting to make it into the hands and ears of more people. I think it's important to be aware of who you're reading, because um, I think it's just really easy to kind of default to what's on the bestseller lists or what you know people you know are recommending. I have really noticed if you go into a bookshop and you look on the smart thinking shelves, there are very few books by women. And you think, hang on a minute, there are lots of really smart books by women. I mean, Caroline Criado Perez is Invisible Women, Mary Beard, Women in Power, Camilla Cavendish has written a great book about longevity. Um, haven't seen my book on the smart thinking shelves. And you think, why does smart thinking have to be male? And if you're a writer who's black, indigenous, or a person of color, you're gonna have had an even harder slog to get yourself known. Bernardina Evaristo, um, who eventually won the Booker Prize in 2019 for Girl, Woman, Other, fantastic novel. But, you know, she was, I think, 60 or something like that when she won it. And her work had really not been recognised until she was, you know, in her late 50s. Thankfully, literary prizes are now noticing that women write brilliant things. And the Women's Prize for Fiction, who have been celebrating women's literature since 1996, included the first trans woman on their long list in 2021. So there is some hope in all of this. In general, the literary world is becoming more aware of what it was lacking for a really long time, so I do feel hopeful. I think we still have a long way to go, but I think we're on the right path. And what's super great is that changing who we're personally reading 
couldn't be easier. When you go to pick up a book, you just double check if you've assumed that it's not for you based on gender, race, or anything else, and maybe give it a go. I'm pretty sure that some gems await. <laughs>